The events in today's gospel are known as the Transfiguration. To better understand what transfiguration means, I decided to look up the definition. So I googled it. The first definition by Google was this. Transfiguration. A complete change of form or appearance into a more beautiful or spiritual state. Then I clicked on the free dictionary.com, which defined it as this. Transfiguration, a marked change in form or appearance, a metamorphosis. Then I decided to check out the old faithful, Miriam Webster. The definition I, find, I found wasn't anything special, but something caught my attention. What caught my attention is how Marion Webster used transfiguration in a sentence. The sentence is this. After his transfiguration into a Buddhist monk, all his family and friends were amazed by his newfound patience and tranquility. I really like two things in particular about this sentence. The first is that it makes transfiguration inclusive by using the word in terms of the Buddhist experience. The second thing I like is how this understanding might inform our understanding of transfiguration as Christians. Being transfigured or participating in a process of transfiguration as Christians might be seen as something only Jesus goes through. The Marian Webster's use of transfiguration suggests that if someone can be transfigured into a Buddhist monk, then transfiguration isn't something just reserved for the divine. Transfiguration is something that all humans can participate in, something that we can experience. So how do we participate in this process of transfiguration? How do we experience transfiguration? How do we change our spiritual state? This Wednesday is Ash Wednesday, and we now transition from Epiphany into Lent. Epiphany is a season where we celebrate the manifestation of God as human in Jesus Christ. Christ's coming into the world, symbolized by the great star in the sky, and through the witness of the three kings, and Christ's baptism. This week, as we shift into Lent, it's a time of preparation. Historically, this is a time where people prepare for baptism. It is a time of reflection and repentance, a time to deepen in our relationship with Jesus. It is amazing how our church calendar works. It's perfect timing. We have an opportunity in the weeks ahead to turn inward. You might choose to give something up like chocolate or beer or gossip. You might take on a practice for Lent like a prayer practice or a study practice. We are offering two Lenten hikes here at Epiphany. A book study a panel discussion about gun violence that will create much thought for reflection and then Lent Madness our online offering on Facebook which gives you an opportunity to learn about different Saints and reflect on their lives which may lead you to reflect on your own life the opportunities for what you can do are endless and as the season of Epiphany ends and Lent begins, it is important to keep in mind what we learn in Epiphany. Christ is with us. In his presence through prayer, in his presence at this table, in his presence in those who walk with us and support us, the importance of taking on or giving something up is that we just do it. It's getting into the routine. The purpose of any practice is to remind you of God's presence in your life 
and to continue reminding you over and over again. There is something amazing that can happen in any regular practice you may take on or give up. It is in this type of practice that you might be transfigured. In my limited experience with transfiguration, I know that this effort is still not enough. It's not that easy. It's not easy to experience a spiritual metamorphosis. So there's an important piece of the puzzle that I want to share with you, that I want to remind you not to forget, that I hope will help. In our brown bag Bible study group on Wednesdays, we have been talking about transformation and how the gospel speaks to our own personal transformation. Transformation is similar to transfiguration in that transfiguration is transformation on a spiritual level. In our Bible study, we have been talking about how easy it is to change our physical reality, our environment, our circumstances, our routine or practice, and think that what we are doing is transforming. We might change our job or our appearance or our clothes or our spouse or partner. But is this really transformation? It doesn't seem to be real transformation because for the most part, nothing on the inside is being changed. This week I was going through my own personal struggle, my sense of call to the ministry, which is normal and expected. Being so new here at Epiphany, I've been trying to figure out my ministry and how I fit in. As a new priest, I have also been trying to figure out where I fit in. I've been trying to define my ministry. I noticed that I have that new job, a personal charge, to try to make a difference, to change the world, to make things bigger and better. What I saw this week is that all I'm really doing is changing the environment trying to do more, but nothing really seems to be changing. I experienced getting frustrated at myself. I experienced getting frustrated with other people. I shared this with Melissa and she shared with me something that I think transfigured me. Melissa said this, it's not about the doing. It's about the being. The ministry you do, the programs you are working on are great. You get an A plus, keep doing it. But keep in mind, your main focus here at Epiphany is a ministry of presence. Your ministry is found in the cracks, in the conversations after church or after Bible study. It's in the conversations. It's in the relationships. After thinking about what Melissa said, it makes a lot of sense. Showing up is important. But being present in the moment is where we are transfigured. We are transfigured when we are present to all the miracles that are happening right before our eyes. When we see the people around us transfigured right before our eyes. In today's gospel, we hear that Jesus becomes dazzling. We hear that the skin on Moses' face shines when he sees God. When we are present in the moment, we can see the same thing. The look of accomplishment when your son or daughter graduates from high school. <laughs> 